Hey guys, this is Mike, and this is the third, no, fourth video in the LibGDX desktop tutorial. Uh, so in the last video, we did the Game Keys class, and now we will be using this class to do all of our game input. Um, so in this video, I'm going to be turning the game into a state-based game. So a little bit of review first. In the in the first video, I explained a little bit about what each of the methods in the application listener do. We got create, that gets called when the application starts up, when the game first starts. Then render, gets called continuously in a loop. And then dispose, gets called when you exit the game. Um, so that pretty much means that the entire game has to go in this render method. You can actually just put the entire game in here if you want, but even for small games it's gonna get messy really fast. So what we want to do is keep everything organized by splitting up the game into different parts and that is the main idea behind game states. So here's our game and now I've split it up into different states. I got something here called the menu state, this is the main menu. Play state, this is where you actually play the game. You can have as many states as you want, one for the game over, one for the high score screen, etc. And this game state manager, uh, this class, its job is really simple. All it has to do is keep track of which game state is the current one, and then go ahead and update and draw that one. That's pretty much all the game state manager will do. So, with that in mind, let's go ahead and create our state-based game. First off, we're going to need the game state manager. So, we're going to put that in the managers package. Game state manager. Boom. Okay, so we're also going to need the current game state. So this is it current game state. Now we don't have a game state class yet so we're gonna go ahead and make that right now. I'm gonna make a new package for it. All the game states are gonna go into this package called game states and I'm gonna make that up here game state. This is the game state super class. It's gonna be abstract and uh, we're going to be subclassing this. Every game state needs a reference to the game state manager because the game state manager is the only class in the game that has the ability to change to another game state. So we want to be able to switch game states from another game state. So uh, protected uh, game state, game state manager as the parameter, and this.gsm is equal to gsm. Now every game state is going to need five methods. Public, abstract, void, init. Uh, it's going to need an update with a float argument in it. I'll explain what the float is for later. Uh, abstract. It's going to need a draw. It's going to need handle input. Ooh, these, this is void. Uh, and it's going to need dispose. So I'm, I'm just going to explain a little bit. Init gets called when the game state first starts up. Update and draw is what we're going to be calling when uh, we do the render method, the game loop stuff. Uh, handle input generally gets called inside the update. This is specifically for getting doing stuff with the game keys. Uh, dispose gets called when we want to switch to another game state and we want to get rid of this one. So, back here in Game State Manager, let's go ahead and import that game state and uh, do the constructor up here, Game State Manager. Um, we're going to leave it blank for now because uh, we don't have any actual game states. So, public void, it needs a way to switch states. We're going to use integers to identify the different states. So I'm just going to put them up here, public final, static final int, uh, the main menu, I'm just going to set that to zero. You can use whatever number you want, it doesn't really matter. Uh, play could be like uh, this, it doesn't really matter like I said. So I'm just going to use that for emphasis. 
Um, so down here, if state is equal to menu, then we're going to switch to menu state. And if state is equal to play, switch to play state. We don't have either of those game states yet, so I'm just going to leave them as comments. Um, so the game state manager has a uh, reference, uh, can switch to different game states. It keeps track of which game state is the current one, and it also needs to update and render the current game state. So we're going to do that here. Um, public void update float dt and we're just going to update the current game state. Same thing with draw, public void draw, just draw the current game state. Oh, um, I have swing on the mind so I put a G in there for automatically. We're not using graphics anymore. Uh, so, hmm, interesting, what's, what's going on here? Undefined for type game state? Oh, I didn't save this, so. <laughs> Just make sure you just save the game state.java. Okay, there we go. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and put the game state manager in our game. Back over here, we're gonna add it as a field, private game state manager gsm. Import it. And down here in create, we're gonna do gsm is equal to new game state manager. And like I said, the game state manager all it does is update and render the current game state, so that's what we're going to do over here. Update and uh, gdx.graphics.getDeltaTime and then gsm.draw. So now I want to explain a little bit about what exactly this float dt is that I'm using. When I update, I pass in a float dt to the game state. And the float that I'm passing in is this thing called gdx.graphics.getDeltaTime. This is basically, oh, there's a description right there if you hover over it. It says the time span between the current frame and the last frame in seconds. So pretty much it gives me the amount of time that's passed since the last call to render. So right, we have our loop here. Um, so render runs and then the game loop goes and then render gets called again. Get delta time pretty much just tells me how long it's been since the last render call. And we're going to use that to find out how much to move the game forward. If it's been a long time since the last render call, that means get delta time is going to be large and we want to move the game forward by a large amount. And if render, uh, if the last time since render was a short amount of time, then we only want to move the game just a short amount of time. Um, I didn't have this uh, delta time in my previous games because I had full control over the game loop. I capped it at 60 loops per second, and I never expected it to go any less than that. But here, libgdx, I don't have full control over the game loop. So I'm going to have to use this delta time to find out how much to move the game forward. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and create our first game state. We're going to skip the menu state because, you know, it's pretty boring. Let's go ahead and get into the game. We're going to make the play state first. So this is going to extend game state like that. And uh, constructor, public play state, game state manager, GSM, and then super GSM. Just to import everything. Okay, so now, like I said before, the game state needs to implement these five methods. Here, so we're going to do that. Public void uh, init is one, public void update, float dt. You can just, by the way, go over here and click add un unimplemented methods if you want, but uh, there's a lot of bloat that comes with that, so I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna do it manually. Public void draw, public void handle input, and public void dispose. So these are the five methods that we need. Um, back in the game state manager, let's go ahead. Oh, right, I completely forgot. Set state. 
Remember how game state has this dispose method that gets that should be called when the game state uh, switches to another one and we want to get rid of this one. So let's do that. So when we set state to a new game state, we want to dispose the uh, current one first. Like that. But only if it's uh, not null. So if game state does not equal to null, then we're going to dispose of it. So, first thing we want to do is in the game state manager constructor, let's go ahead and just set state to play. And over here, we have if state is equal to play, switch to play state. So, the way to switch game states is really simple just game state is equal to new, and then play state this. Obviously, if I want to switch to the menu state, I'm going to be doing something later, like game state is equal to new, menu state this. But we don't have a menu state yet, so I'll just keep that commented out for now. So, uh, let's go ahead and check if this actually works. Don't forget to call init in the constructor up here. So, update. System.out.print line play state updating. And over in draw, system.out.print line play state drawing. This is just a test to see if this game state is actually being updated and drawn. So let's go ahead and run it. I'm going to uh, first let me bring up the console up here so you can see the print statements. And ooh, we're gonna run this run 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 run. There it is. Okay. So you can see up here, play state is updating and drawing. So the game state manager works. Um, uh, that's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, I promise. I know I promised before that we will be getting into the game stuff soon, but I really, really need to get this stuff out of the way. Um, but now we have this play state, and we can actually start writing the game inside this game state. So in the next video, we're going to be creating the player spaceship. So yeah, that's it for this one, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.